Professor Minford, thanks for joining us. Should she U-turn? What should she do? No, I don't think she should U-turn. I think that the Bank of England needs to be much more active in its uh, policies of intervention in the uh, gilts market. I mean, that's where the market... Um, uh, the, um, the pain is being felt there, for sure. Are. Yeah. And, and I mean, basically, the bank's role is to maintain orderly markets. So I think it should it should intervene to buy gilts as it did two weeks ago when there was the pension crisis and had, a had of course, a major calming effect on the markets because this is what QE does. It's a very powerful instrument. And, and yeah, it's basically the bank shoving money out there, buying government debt. Um, many would say that just adds to inflation, of course, and inflation's about 10%. It's not the time to be buying gilts. The Bank of England said our job is to be selling gilts, to suck money out of the system, not put money into the system. Um, so they don't want to be doing that, do they? Well, they've said that, but actually this is nonsense because, of course, central banks can perfectly well do that. It's, they, can, they can tighten money at the short end and raise, raise rates, and uh, they can, of course, um, loosen money at the long end. And the problem at the moment is we've got far too tight a monetary policy. So this, this point that Andrew Bailey made, that it would mean he would uh, affect his inflation policy uh, badly, is completely wrong. I mean, monetary policy is extremely tight. OK, and, so, I mean, uh, let, let's just say that they obviously would take a very different view of how easy it is to... to, to clamp down on inflation in, in, in the way you're describing. But I don't want to get too technical, if I could. I, I, I suppose one would, many will look at what has happened and say, you, Patrick Minford, supported this plan. Did you know that this was going to be the market outcome of this plan when you supported it? Because if you were wrong, if you didn't anticipate it, maybe Liz Trust should be finding, you know, different economists to listen to. Well, I think that the plan is perfectly good, you see. I mean, uh, the, there's great market fears about uh, the, the fiscal sustainability, but according to um, perfectly reasonable calculations, the fiscal sustainability is, is very good if you take a longer-term view about the trend in the debt ratio, which is the appropriate thing to do for solvency. So the, obviously, at the moment, the markets are, are facing enormous turbulence because of it, worldwide tightening of money, and so there's a great deal of nervousness about. But I think the way to handle that is to deal with market turbulence in our gilts market directly through QE, and then to keep the policies going. And at the end of the month, the Chancellor can, can produce the evidence, which I think is going to be strong, that he can perfectly well get his debt ratio down over the next decade to around 50% on the basis of what's going to happen to the economy. And, yeah, and, but you're and, really you know, banking on big to his policies. You're banking that's, with... that's why I think it's going to be correct. But, but, but what it's got to do, meanwhile, is to keep going until he can get to the end of the month. At the moment, he's being destabilized by disruption in the market, which the Bank of England really ought to get hold of and stop. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting, of course. You, back in 2017, were writing that we had to get the debt ratio down from 80%. You couldn't, you couldn't keep the debt ratio at 80% of national income. You couldn't let spending and revenue carry on. We're vulnerable to any rise in interest rates, which is bound to occur as easy money comes to an end. I'm reading all of this from a piece you wrote in The Sun. You wrote, the arithmetic is nasty. The arithmetic is a great deal more nasty now than it was when you wrote that. And many would just say, you know, it's, the, it, it's, it's unrealistic to think that Liz Truss can take on the market at a time of such, uh, you know, fragility at the moment here and elsewhere. Well, it's not taking on the market. If you look at what happened during COVID, we borrowed 500 billion and we made massive quantitative easing purchases by the bank, which, of course, kept the markets extremely calm. So we, we got that demonstration of exactly what, what is possible. And so, um, you know, we were back in 2017, what you've quoted me there, where it was kind of normal times, you know, it was a very different situation. It was pre-COVID. Now we're post-COVID and we're much more like at the end of a war, at the end of World War II, when we had a debt ratio of nearly 200% of GDP. And the question is, what do you do in these extreme situations? And it's, it obviously isn't to throw in the towel and say you you can't do anything with taxes and borrowing because 
plainly we did over two centuries um, in, in those contexts, both after you know the Napoleonic Wars and after World War II. So now we're post-COVID, which is very analogous. And it's really important we don't do something really stupid at this point. And Liz Truss's policies for growth are absolutely right. And to be thrown off them by a bit of market turbulence is insane. And the Bank of England was actually originally created <laughs> by the kings at that time to keep <laughs> orderly markets and enable okay. the kings to borrow. And that's its role. And Professor it, Minford? And when when, when, when um, uh, Bailey says, you know, he can't do it, um, it's palpably false. But Patrick Minford, Professor Minford, thanks so much for joining us.